Hello, hello, and welcome to the Odafest podcast. It's Jay, and I have with me an Angelo and a Nancy. I am a Nancy. I, I might am not an be Angelo. the Nancy. And I'm a I Jay. I am the Angelo. <laughs> Uh, hope everyone's been doing all right. We're in firmly Spooktober month. Um, something that I've been forgetting to mention, and I feel real bad, but I've been super tired and busy with the last few weeks. So setting up for podcasts sometimes makes me forget things. But super important, OdaFest 2022 early bird tickets are now available. Do 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 do. Head to odafest.com for all the details. Uh, and it's a quick reminder that Odafest 2022 will be a two-day event rather than our traditional three-day event. Uh, in keeping the interest of everyone's health, we will be requiring that all attendees wear masks and we will be checking for vaccination status as well because we want everybody to be able to enjoy and celebrate safely. What a surprise. Yes. Surprise. But hey, through doing this, it means that we can have a fun OdaFest together. We That's have missed together. two at this point, two OdaFests that we will never get back. Well, we, as have, much... we had a virtual OdaFest. We had a virtual but that one. Wasn't... It was still a lot of fun, yeah. but we weren't very successful, physically but still... together. As much as yes, I would love to cram tough. two more OdaFests into next year, I don't think we can do it. My God. That's the solution, you fool. Just now we're gonna have do it. more OdaFest. Obviously, we've I tried think there that will only be one. It really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, um, I'll be honest. So, like at Calgary Expo, that reminds me that one of the people that came up to us at the booth uh, and I answered their question was they asked if OdaFest Aurora was gonna come back, and it almost. I know we've talked about it on the podcast before, but it hurts me a little to answer that question, not because like people should know, but because like Odafest Aurora was not a failure in any way. It was just too much work for us as a volunteer organization. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that we it wasn't well loved by the staff. And obviously it was well loved by the attendees because they keep on asking about it. And it's not like we don't it's it, it's fondly remembered but it's so tough for us to get together and do it because it really does ask a lot of us from a logistics perspective, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. if OdaFest Aurora uh, were going to happen again, event staff would probably need to be paid to plan it all out, and that just does uh, not work with OdaFest. Maybe we just need like a secondary team, but I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon because I don't it's clone just myself. a lot of work. It's just so much I also work. don't want to clone uh, either of you. But I miss it. I would love to have a clone of myself. I would throw them off I... balconies. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a particular reason behind no. that, Angelo? Have you ever seen the things that I do? I'm stupid sometimes, and I deserve to be thrown off a balcony now and then. I was perfectly expecting you to say something like, no, it's because of anime. <laughs> I was going to say because of anime. Mine, of anime. Mine would have been because of anime. If I was going to clone myself, I would go like, you know, like shadow clone jutsu. And then I'd make the cross symbol and then it would be like, poof, clone. And then no one would be happy about that. They'd be like, why are there two of you? You're not a worthy addition <laughs> to society. Now that I think about it, it makes me think of the, uh, what were they called? The Mahler twins in Invincible? And uh, how they just, not neither of them knew which one was actually the original. And they just bickered oh. and, and argued with each other all the time. It was hilarious. It was That's wonderful. Funny. And also a really weird psychological trap. Oh, yeah. And their whole way of dealing with the psychological trap was, we don't care. I'm the original. The other one's the fake, no matter what they say. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're just joking about it. That's the whole joke. Hmm. Hmm. Invincible is great. I should read the comic sometime. I still haven't watched I've it. I've heard I interesting should. things. I'll wait for the season two. Anything new with you guys? As far as I, I go, nothing particularly new, except I had a fantastic uh, mint kiwi sparkling water boba from Don't Yell at Me, and it was absolutely amazing. That does sound amazing. It was. It, it sounds was refreshing. Sweet. Yeah, it, it sounds was refreshing. Tart. It was Refresh. refreshing. It had the chewy jade boba pearls. It was mm. um, it was ten out of ten. Yeah. 
That sounds really good. I wish there were more don't yell at me's here. I don't. We we just have the one on 17th and that's it. And quite that's, frankly, that's I feel like that's good enough. But, but Because more. every time you have a franchise, if if it becomes a large franchise, then the quality goes down because everyone does their own thing differently. Even if the recipes are the same, the people making them are different. Yep. I suppose. Still, Call though, me I would love one. I would love one here in Bubble Tea District. Ooh, I live in District. Bubble Tea District. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I live very much in one of the major food districts. I love it. I just love yeah. how there's Presso Tea and there's Don't Yell at Me right beside each other. You mm -hmm. can get pizza on the wave when you're going from one to the other. You you have a bubble tea. And you slurp it down. You're super happy, and like that 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 refreshed me completely. But I'm a little bit hungry. I could go for some amazing pizza right now. You walk out of the pizza place. You're fat and happy. You're just like, mm, mm, yes, that pizza certainly hit the spot. Now, what shall I have for dessert? Oh, go go back to bubble Dobby tea <laughs> right over there. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, you gotta have your you gotta have cycle. your appetizer bubble tea. And then you get your meal pizza, and then you get dessert bubble tea. That makes sense. Exactly. To me. Exactly. It's a vicious cycle. Because then when you're done yeah. your dessert bubble tea, now you're like, huh, you know, I think I finished digesting that pizza a bit. I think I'm ready for more. I think you mean a delicious cycle, not a vicious cycle. There's a difference. Uh, a delicious Amazing. cycle. I don't know. <laughs> I love it. I love it either way. It is enabling you, of Nance? the highest degree. What you got going on? Um, I got a new sound booth, so I'm oh. in it right now, and I am very much surrounded and comfortably blanketed by sound blankets. In oh my sound. God. In sound. It's very lovely. Um, so those of you who've been keeping up with the saga, well, you would know that I moved uh, almost two years ago, and I have been jerry-rigging my sound treatment since then. And it's nice to finally have my dedicated sound space again because I used to at the old house. I, I had taken my walk-in closet and I basically turned it into a proper sound-treated space. And then when we moved here, I didn't really have a, a spot to do that in. I don't have a walk-in closet here. So uh, with, with this booth, I basically have a ready-to-go space. I walk in, I do my recording, and then I'm done. And it's perfect. I don't have to like jig around with this and that and maybe I need some more pillows here and maybe I need to stick another blanket there and oh, I gotta wait for the vents to stop booming like it's it's nice so for you what kind of modifications do you personally need to make for a room to turn it from just a broom closet into into a sound booth from room into sound room from room into a sound room so uh, the most important thing is to make sure your room doesn't sound like a room. Uh, most <clears throat> rooms that you go into, uh, if you've... I know it's been a long time since you moved, Angelo, but Jay, yes. you've, you've more recently gone through this transition. In a blank yes. room where you don't have a lot of furniture, it's really metallic sounding. Like if you clap oh, your hands... Oh, it's horrible. It's... You hear the metallic It reverberates ping. throughout the echoness. Yes. Yeah, and it, and it especially doesn't help if you don't have any like carpet or anything that deadens sound. Like my place is mostly walls and hard walls and hard floor, so therefore sound is everywhere. Actually, mm -hmm. now that you mentioned that, I remember that when we when Jay showed us off his new uh, his new apartment when mm -hmm. everything was still in its boxes, nothing was really unpacked. Yeah, we could walk mm -hmm. in, and if you said something, it even in like a smallish space. Mm -hmm. It felt like it had just the smallest amount of reverb that was, uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it was noisy. Yeah. It was noisy. Yeah. And it's not, it's not the same kind of reverb that you would get in a bathroom, for example. Bathrooms just have that really interesting magical echo in them, especially if you've got like shower running, which is why people sing in the shower so much. I never considered that. Really? I, I never thought, I thought it was more about, oh, you're alone in the shower, time to sing. I never thought about, like, the reverb in the room. The reverb of a, a shower. a different singing environment. Oh, we yeah. can all be Adele when we're in the shower. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Uh, so for me, specifically, uh, things like sound blankets, acoustic blankets, um, and you need something that 
you can basically walk into. So for the longest time, and this is something that other professional voice actors do as well, uh, I took a regular closet and my closets have actual doors on them instead of like the doors that you can slide open. And so on those doors, I would hang a ton of comforters and I would have pillows pressed in around like near my microphone, not touching it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and then near the floor, I would have like spare pillows that that would be there to help dampen some of the hard sounds that are in the closet itself. Mm. I didn't want to glue sound tiles to my closet because at some point I would need to actually use said closet. Um, mm -hmm. And sound tiles take up like the quality sound tiles actually take up a fair amount of space for something that you stick on walls. Uh, so that was sort of something that I did for the last year and a bit while I was working from home and still doing gigs at home. And it works. Uh, you can you can remove a little bit of the noise, a little bit of the reverb. But if you have really loud yelling lines, good luck like that. That's not something that you want to do in a poorly treated space. So thankfully, luckily, I didn't have a lot of those. Question. But now I can. Nice. Now I can. Now I can do like the mega power up anime yells, and it's not gonna sound horrible. Are sound tiles different than sound blankets in their effectiveness? Yes and no. Um, so neither of them are soundproof. If you're expecting to soundproof a space, mm -hmm. you gotta like stop all air from basically coming into your space. I live in a fairly quiet settings so i don't have to worry about you know oh my neighbor's dogs are barking and there are sirens like going up and down my street i don't have to worry about that so much so soundproofing isn't necessarily something that i need sound treatment with tiles usually helps with reflections but sound blankets help with reflections and keeping some of the harsher bassier noises out not all of them but some of them sound tiles tend to help distribute the noise a bit better and helps like sort of lessen how much they re they reverb in the room so they're good for slightly different things but for me a blanket works way better than tiles mostly because i would need a ton of tiles to deaden this room this is a tall office like it's, i think it's an 11 foot ceiling office oh so there's God. there's a lot of vertical space to cover and because of that extra vertical overhead the corners in the ceilings are actually stupidly reflective. It's, it's oh. actually metallic sounding. Oh no. So for me, having blankets uh, lower the ceiling a bit for me to six feet and then have it in within an enclosed booth is perfect. Nice. Speaking of sound, because this is the only thing I know about this franchise, clicker zombies. Why clicker zombies? Because Calgary. Why Calgary? Because The Last of Us is shooting in Calgary. Mm -hmm. And it is a major dysfunction for Calgarians. Because it cuts off one of our main entry routes into downtown Calgary. And yes, exit. I have, you actually uh, can't exit uh, that way either. This. Yeah. So uh, we have one flyover going from what is Fourth Memorial Ave. Trail uh, to 4th yeah. Ave in our downtown. And right now, it is as we speak, but not as this episode is airing, the AF. entire uh, flyover is blocked off. The mm -hmm. first night that I drove past it, it, it slowed me down by about five minutes. Five minutes right. that I'll never have back in my life. And I looked True. up to the flyover and I saw, oh, there's a bunch of cars up there. Is, is that mm -hmm. maybe the cast and the crew uh, uh, doing their work or whatever? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second night, the second night I drove by and all the cars are covered in moss and there's a tree up there. And I was like, wait a minute, there, those cars are part of the set. That's not people who drove into the area to set something up. That is the set. And it mm -hmm. looked pretty cool. Not going to lie. Since then, some aerial uh, photos of the of the set of The Last of Us set that's being uh, shot right now have shown up on Reddit, including the guy, the actor guy sitting on the railing Pedro. of the flyover, not Pedro giving a Pascal. single fuck. <laughs> yeah. He could fall off over the edge of the flyover. But no. Yeah. He's I fighting think it's a pretty cool mushroom zombies. 
he ain't afraid of no railing. Honestly, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, even though it is, it has been a severely, excruciatingly, unbelievably mild inconvenience. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of cool that that this is being uh, done in our city. It's it's a huge, a huge yeah. bit of like like nerd culture, for, gamer for culture. People who don't know, like. So Alberta does get used as a film location fairly frequently, not as frequently as like Vancouver does, uh, but Alberta does does get it for a lot of shows like uh, or movies that need like rural or uh, like mountain terrain and things like that. Um, they t- they typically shoot outside of cities. There are some other things that will shoot in cities. I think Ghostbusters were shot around uh calgary maybe about one or two years ago um there's a lot of there's a lot of things like that but like it while it can be an inconvenience in terms of uh you know on location shooting and how it affects people's everyday lives uh generally speaking it is a cool thing to get more of the film industry improve the arts industry in calgary because people know if you live here we have a severely underdeveloped arts industry or undersupported arts industry. So anything that you know gets that money in and gets that uh, interest into developing local projects uh, when it comes to art, huge ups. You know, what I'm was it that was? It. What was it that was being shot out in uh, High River? Was it Heartland? Yes. So I actually had one of the, one of the camera guys from Heartland walk into the source in Oak Oaks one day. Hmm. And he said that I, I I just always remember this. He was like, Hey bro, hey buddy, you got any of those spicy rechargeable batteries? Like spicy, spicy. rechargeable batteries. Hmm. Spicy, like spicy. We've got some rechargeable batteries, but I don't know what their capsaicin content is, bro. And mm-hmm. apparently just he was looking for particular brands of of batteries and he's like no those ones are shit i've tried them before they're they're horrible i need these other brands they're the spicy ones they're the ones that actually do the do and it just has stuck with me for years how how someone in 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 the film industry just says that yeah batteries are spicy and i just i love that i just love that and that's the kind of creativity and the thought processes that you get from these these industries that are just Mm -hmm you don't see or hear it every day. And it just, it makes life a little bit better, a little bit brighter. (laughs) It's fun, it's fun. It's it's so stupid. Why do I remember some guy calling batteries spicy 10 years later? Because Mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah, one of the reasons I was was trying to figure out uh, what else was gonna be shot, but I couldn't find it that easily. But uh, one of the reasons that we are becoming a better um destination for certain shoots is because like we're our our canadian dollar is lower so if it's an american production they can spend more uh or the same amount of money or less for the same amount of production um we have you know lots of things that we can offer in terms of different landscapes and um settings and stuff like that and generally speaking where i think we're trying to promote that we can't like you know alberta has that sort of you know come here we're a good destination for whatever your uh production needs in terms of you know how things need to look and how it needs to feel um so it's glad i'm happy to hear about it maybe one day one of us can get into a, a movie or a production as like an extra that'd be fun i'm fairly certain that one uh one uh, cosplayer that frequents Odafest that continually gets banned from Odafest but shows up anyway. He actually did apply to be an extra in uh, in The Last of Us. I'm not sure if he made it. That's or cool. Not. By the way, I'm hey. joking about him being banned. He's never been banned from Odafest. It's true. It's true. Except dun, dun, right now. He, he's, he's banned right now, but... He's banned from listening to this podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If only it was that. <laughs> if only That's it was that easy. If only yep. it was as easy as Best Buy banning people from buying PS5s. Unless. Also true. Unless. Unless, unless you have one of their specific memberships. So, 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 this month, no, the end of September, Best Buy, at the very least in the U.S., I'm not sure about Canada, but at the very least in the U.S., they 
finally got some PS5s and Xbox Xs in stores for the very first time this year. Holy in the United I did, States. I did not realize that they hadn't even had them in stores yet until I read an article about it. Mm-hmm. But online, and possibly in store, but online at the least, they are paywalling the ability to purchase a PS5 or Xbone X. Which is just insane, right? Yes, yes, it is. Like, I mean, that's a great way to just price yourself out of being competitive. Because, hey, I'll just head to any other store that could possibly have it and get it from them. I don't have to get it from Best Buy. Why the hell would I bother getting it from Best Buy? The problem is, it's still kind of hard to get these consoles for a lot of people. I get that. But I mean, and the reality is, a $200 paywall that gives you tech support for a lot of people will be more uh-huh. palatable than paying an extra no. two or $300. You said scalper. it yourself. Best Buy hasn't even gotten supply until like recently. So it's not like they're any better at getting supply. So screw them. Get Honestly, it from somewhere else. screw them. That's yeah. stupid. That's, that's I, rude. I agree. Um, the only other argument for this case that I've heard, and I could very easily argue against it, is, oh, but Costco, you have to have a membership to go in and buy things. And I'm like, yeah, that's part of their regular model. You pay for yeah. the membership just to use Costco. Best you Buy is banning you that. from being able to purchase specific things unless you have a membership. Like, in, in that sort of situation, Costco, you pay the, what is it, $50 a year? Yeah. Just to be able to shop at Costco at all. It doesn't matter if it's for consoles or TVs or Toilet for paper. steaks. And that's to cabbage. access their sort of wholesale bulk pricing Pricing, deal. yeah. So the $50 yeah. actually ends up paying for itself very quickly. Yeah. I think the only exclusion, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if you don't have a Costco membership, you can still use their gas uh, stations, right? Yeah, I, I believe don't know. so. I mean, you don't get the you don't get the Costco member pricing for their gas station, but you can still use their gas stations. Yeah, and that's about it. Whereas Best Buy, on the other hand, if you needed a, mem- a monthly membership to uh, shop at Best Buy or or a yearly membership, I should say, wow, there would be no more Best Buys very fast. Don't forget, it's it, like part of it is that Costco sells things that are essentials, necessities, groceries. TP, mm-hmm. you know, so it's like, yeah, that sort of makes sense. Best Buy? I'm fairly certain they go, also sell I could PS5s. Go to, there are times, there were periods in my life where I didn't go to a Best Buy for like 10 years, 15 I, I years. I still haven't been in a Best Buy in a very long time. You see what I mean? Once. So why? So what do you think you're doing? What kind of advantage do you think you're, you have? You know, you're not even, it's not like they're securing you a PS5 either. Let's be clear about that. That's fair. Yeah. So it's just to have the option, to have the mm-hmm. option, the ability to add it to the your privilege. cart and pray that it's pray that it's I not even so out of stock. privileged. Yeah. So privileged. So yeah. yeah, I don't know what they can't, think. They, can't say I'm pleased about this, but I also am not surprised that Best Buy's trying Here's to the this. thing. Here's the thing. You have to remember that, like all major marketing or programs at a store or whatever this these are not usually just unilateral decisions someone came up with an idea someone else worked on that idea and then they got that idea approved over and over and over again that's the dumb part yep this decision had multiple eyes on it it wasn't one or two people who who led the charge and just did it on their own it wasn't some Low-level uh, web developer being like, man, you know, wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it, it make it, us so much money if we paywalled <laughs> the... It's not the... even... It's not even a case where, like, you know, a lot of these types of things, programs, I do... Because we know this from, you know, for example, running the convention or just, you know, working wherever you might work. Uh, you can apply a lot of the, your, the own knowledge that you've gained in life where it's like, you don't typically make decisions right off the bat this is probably an idea that's been sitting on their plate for months if not years you know there's a lot of time and investment in r d and focus group type stuff or whatever for all types of these decisions and this is the one they came up with yeah 
You you should remember that the next time you just de- decide to buy from them. I'm not saying I don't ever buy from Best Buy, but like, what the heck is this about? This is the dumbest thing I've seen in a while. And we talk about a lot of dumb things that happen. Yeah, it's very, very, very <laughs> we, we're happy to point out all the dumb flaws in uh, this life that we lead. So I am happy to fantasize about cloning myself just to throw myself off a balcony for the dumb things I do. <laughs> but sure. Best Buy takes the cake. What if your I clone even, bought? I won't what if even your look clone went to Best to Buy up to and bought a out. membership? <laughs> your clone deserves to be thrown out of a window or thrown off a balcony if they go to Best Buy, buy a membership to buy a PS5. Is it really a clone of Angelo, though, if it did that? No. Exactly. That's why it's, it's ethical true. to throw it off the balcony. Uh, I see. All right. It's a project failure, therefore. Makes sense. All right. Makes sense. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, speaking of other things that are weird and stupid, uh, I recently got, you know, I have Google Drive on my phone, like I think you two do as well. And Google mm-hmm. Drive occasionally sends you notification if someone's been sharing a file with you or someone left comments in a file that you're mm-hmm. working mm-hmm. on together. And out of nowhere, a person I have never met, an email address I have never seen before, has tagged me in an untitled presentation on Google Drive. And this is the the fishiest stuff that I've ever seen coming out of a random phone notification. Like, this is, this is someone posing as, oh, hi, I'm a hot single woman, and I'm just looking for a guy for kicks. Also, he has to be good in bed. And the way that these posts are written in this untitled presentation, it's clear this is someone who is either catfishing or just regular fishing. But it's like, this is so easily filter outable if you had looked at this at the same level as like email spam like oh mm. hot singles in your area yeah are sure. you saying there's hot sexy word documents in my area hot <sighs> sexy google presentations oh my god powerpoints i know i know and it is it is the weirdest stuff like you have to watch out for powerpoints i, I gotta send you guys the screenshot it's ridiculous Anyway, like I, I, I really have to give them props because they are clearly learning how to abuse other platforms in order mm-hmm. to spread this phishing scam. I mean, I would never say that people who, uh, you know, do the social engineering to achieve phishing, they're not, they're people who typically know what they're doing, right? Yeah. Sort of. They're I mean, it's very surface illiterate. level thinking because if they yeah. even bothered to use a spell checker, you could usually catch a lot of these scams. But like, it's it's annoying because these notifications come to you whether you know this person or not. So now they're finding a way to bypass like an email <laughs> filter that catches. The I shit. really love the second. Um... <laughs> message because it's clear that they don't really have a strong grasp of english and but they're also trying not to sound generic so they use like a thesaurus program or something like that i guess it's a thesaurus like it's just it's just something insane. like that because there's a lot of words what, that like what is don't a really bitsy fit girl yo I guess, what is the what next is it's the next level no no you don't you don't understand it's the next level of e-girl it's the next level of like a uh, vtuber e-girl whatever she's bitsy <laughs> Oh my god. So you have your e-girls who are all about video games, your yeah. i-ladies who are the classic internet ladies of, of the network, and then the bitsy girls who are yeah. so low level that they are the ones and the zeros. Allow me to, of the to, to uh, elucidate our audience with I, I, the following. I enjoy how her name is Anna Living. Mm-hmm. I'm like Anna Living along <laughs> in parentheses nearby. <laughs> Don't know what that means. I am gorgeous, flirty, light skin, and bitsy girl. <laughs> I can't read the next bit. <laughs> nope. But uh, nope. Can't can't play with. You don't can't need say to the know. Either. You don't need to know, children. I'll tell you when you're older. <laughs> Who is Oakley Berg, and why is he trying to pretend to be Joyce and Anna Living? I don't know. This is this is the strange thing. It's like they're just taking random Gmail accounts and tagging them somehow. That's so and then weird. They they stick very very um, 
soliciting have you been comments. Signing up to some weird uh, uh, shopping websites recently, just like oh, a lot of them trying to find the cheapest thing. I'm gonna make an account on this sketchy site. Okay, <laughs> so gonna here's, sell my, here's my number one. Here's my number one suspicion. I come in contact with a lot of other actors and other producers, directors, and people who are associated in animation. If if their oh. address book is ever compromised, they would have so yeah. many emails. Not even that they were getting sold or whatever. But Honestly, maybe it could have tro- even been dumped it from the been, Twitch hack. Yeah, I was just going to say it was probably scraped from somewhere too, from like some kind of database yeah. that might have And it's all entirely possible that if someone got into a casting call document and looked at all mm-hmm, of the mm-hmm. emails of you know anyone who had looked at this, there you go. That Annoys makes the sense. heck out of me. Like these people are clearly, you know, thinking a little bit outside the box, but not enough to make their their phishing messages less obvious. Mm-hmm. So at work, at work as part of our our cybersecurity protocol, <laughs> we regularly are sent, we are regularly sent uh, fake phishing emails that we are expected to press the button in our Outlook that that says report suspicious email. And but Angelo never reports it because he's like, this is an oh, opportunity. <laughs> uh, I I actively report them all the time because of how bad they usually are. Oof. And then I felt bad about one because I actually fell for it. Oh, no. So, so this was at a point where I was actively locked out of a couple different services that are... are web services use mm-hmm. and so i get to work one day after talking like to set some admins or whatever the people who were set the reset things and it's like i get it i get an email and it's like ah click here to re- to reset your outlook uh password and i'm like oh, no. wonderful uh they actually sent the thing so finally i can actually do the thing and so i click on it and then it goes through through like the the SSO system that we have. It, mm-hmm. That might sound weird that we have single sign on and a password system. It just trust it. Mm. It's a it's a thing. Oh, okay. Uh, but then after the SSO page uh, loads, it's like you fell for the phishing email, like Aww. in big red letters. And I'm like, wait, what? Damn it! What? And I look back at the other page, and it's like. Yeah, okay. The email that it was sent from is obviously a fake email. And then I scroll down sure. the page and it's just it, 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 it it's like the 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 company social media thing. I don't, I can't remember right. Yammer. Is that a thing? Oh god. And it's just Yammer. a bunch of people. It's like a thousand people from the company being like, "Yeah, I fell for this. It's stupid." But I didn't type in my password because the, the SSO did that. Right. And I I, I the thing that I, that annoys me the most about that kind of stuff cuz uh in my line of work, I'm very aware of all that stuff as well. But the thing that I don't like is that you, like, for example, you're you're very diligent and you are even reporting the emails, as you're saying. But, the like, it, it, they don't care. The, the, the people, the IT folks who, like, send out the phishing tests and stuff like that, they don't care that you've sent uh, 500 uh, scam emails back and reported them. They just care about the one time you breached. And then you Even get, then, some people really get in trouble for it too. Mm-hmm. I've I've never heard anything about this, so I don't even know if they I don't I don't even know if they care that I did fall for it the one time. So like good on good Maybe. on our our uh system for like having the the scam <laughs> emails for yeah, yeah. training us against it, but like there there's no Maybe. consequences for falling it. What? Maybe you could just tell the IT people that are like, I meant to do that. I was testing you. <laughs> I was testing you? Uh-huh. I wanted to see what it was like and just how badly I could get fished. So the yes. most common one that runs around in my office is that the CEO, in, in air quotes, has sent around an email from his <clears throat> personal email address and needs to ask you for a favor Oh, I've heard about those ones. Oh, yeah. The the lucky thing for me is I have no fucking clue who our CEO is. Nice question mark. And he mark. has no idea who I am. So there'd be no reason ever in a million years for them to ever be emailing me about anything. 
The I, company uh, is small enough that I do at least know who my CEO is, and I know his name, and I know him like you know on site. So I guess. And he and he listens to the Old Fez podcast, right? Right? No, pretty sure right? he doesn't. But if you do, That's hi Cody. For the best. <laughs> <laughs> hi Cody. I don't know how to get out of this conversation uh, topic. <laughs> Wait like, a minute. I don't so think we've ever invoking, talked about <laughs> You are invoking the name and wrath of the CEO with the, the C, next item you the have C in the in list? CEO start, uh, stands for Cody. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it spells with a K. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, yeah I'm actually curious player. about this next bit. Okay. That Nancy right. wants so, to talk about. I am making the stressful transition from one job to another full-time job and <gasps> and you know i have a lot of reasons for it and and i don't need to get into every single one of them but what did you do cody <laughs> nothing actually what did you do actually you i ran into my ceo on our why didn't you do anything cody for dinner and uh, oh. it was very lovely running into him, actually. He was very nice. happy for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, very lovely guy. Um, but I am making this transition, and I wanted to ask both of you, when the last time was that you made this kind of transition and what you miss most about it? Because I know for sure, I know for sure that I will miss the people. I have worked with so many wonderful, smart, talented people at this job, and I will miss them. Deeply. Look, your coworkers don't listen to the podcast. You just, it's fine. You don't have to bother them. <laughs> no, up I here. actually will. So the last time, the last time that I made this uh, change uh -huh. was going from a retail job to my current data center job. Mm -hmm. That was almost that was four and a half years ago. So it's been quite a while. And at the time, it barely felt real. So. <laughs> Like, it did not feel real until I got my first paycheck. And then I was like, wow, I, I'm actually hired at, at a new place. What the fuck? Wild. And uh, the unfortunate reality is that I, there's not a day that goes by where I miss working in retail. Not at all. Uh, there is nothing that I miss about the old job. And quite frankly, everything about changing to the new job has been better. There, there are certain people that I miss working with. But by sure. the time that I quit uh, the source, they weren't working there anyway. So, mm. I uh, yeah, I I I did sort of get a new job recently, but that's not really. I I, I would probably also say like the transition from working service level retail, front facing retail, to the kind of work I do now is. You know, there was a big jump there, sort of both mentally and sort of in a confidence boosting kind of way. But I, unlike Angelo, I actually don't mind retail uh, because it, it sort of suits uh, some of my, I guess, intrinsic interests about, you know, like work. Uh, like I, I am sort of a customer service oriented person. Um, I don't I, I like sort of product knowledge stuff. I like sort of selling stuff, but I'm very much like. I'm not pushing anyone to buy anything that we sell. I've always just been like, is this the thing you need? Cool. My boss says you need to buy six other things, but I think this is the only thing you need. Have a nice day. <laughs> so I didn't mind just the customer service aspect. I didn't mind the product knowledge aspect. I liked the product knowledge. It's just that all the products that we had were boring as hell because they were consumer grade basic bitch garbage. Uh, and the The major issues that I had were with uh, the KPIs and how unrealistic they would continually be. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, KPIs can take any kind of uh, job and make them a miserable slog where you're just looking to game the system. Like any, for example, I, I haven't worked there for years now, so I'm going to talk about a couple KPIs and how and what we did around them. So for there was a solid six month. Uh, What's six a KPI? Month, Key, key performance, performance indicator. indicators. Oh, basically, they're numbers that the that happen show up on reports that your bosses want to see. And so one time they were talking about, oh, UTP. We want to see a whole lot of UTP, and that's units per ticket. And so at that point, it would be all right. So you just have to push people towards 
anything at all, anything in the store. Yeah. And uh, gaming that is a little bit hard, but the conversion metric, the conversion metric for about a year after they started really pushing the UTP metric, after they stopped bullying anyone about that, they harped up conversion, which is the more people walk into your store, the more people buy something. And so our conversion metric was all right. It was pretty good as far as like a retail store goes. But they were like, yeah, but we want it higher, though. You need to make it better. So please make it better. And so what we started doing uh, at the beginning of the of the shift, we would ring a couple things through as cash, set them aside or set the receipt aside, I should say. And then closer to the end of the shift, we would go and refund those things. So that would be like five or six more receipts without mm -hmm. any customer walking through the store, which would boost our, our metric by like four or five percent. It was great. Hmm. Unfortunately, this meant like there would be five or six items or five or six more receipts with no items sold. And so our UTP would go through the freaking floor. Mm. And uh, it was about half a year of this before our district manager finally called us out on what's going on with our UTP. And we were like, oh, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then we stopped, we stopped gaming the system. But uh, <laughs> wow. uh, what, once they catch wind of you gaming the system, you have to stop. But Makes sense. It, 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 it just makes you play weird games with I, when it, where it's you against the system and it's just not fun anymore being like oh these are the cables that you need to do this weird project you're trying to do those cases are kind of fun whereas oh we need to fuck around with the with the system to make it look like more people are buying things than are actually buying things yeah no hmm. <laughs> yeah that does that does sound super annoying yeah the only reason I would go back to retail is if I owned a retail thing, but then I don't want to do that because I would I don't not know. want to own a retail store. That just sounds well, like a bad time. And maybe if you paid your workers fairly, it would be an okay time. No, not even. I don't want workers. <laughs> I don't even want a store. Like what the, if the it was best an I would do. Store? The best I would do is make a bunch of merch, like like t-shirt designs and stuff upload them to redbubble or something another store that does everything for me and then gives me like two or three bucks depending on how many t-shirts were sold or stickers or whatever mm -hmm. fair yeah. that's fair that's that's as far as i would go with retail fuckery i'd buy some angelo stickers oh you, sometime in the future you might be able to but Oh my Not god, exactly Angelo's stickers. cloning himself via stickers. <laughs> and that's comedy, baby. It's called a callback. Cloning myself and throwing oh, the stickers yeah. off the balcony. <laughs> For free. And Nancy will be there being like, ooh, stickers. Stickers. Hey. Love stickers. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. Ta <laughs> it took us 40 minutes, but we got right back to where we started. <laughs> With cloning and murder. Oh, yes. boy. I don't regret this line of topic. I think that's it for this episode. I think that's enough cloning for this episode. I think that's enough murder for this episode. I think you should go buy your early bird pass at odafest.com. I too think you should go get your early bird pass at odafest.com with a quick reminder that Odafest 2022 will be a two-day event. Ditto. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. It was a Pokemon. Bye.